Applying ink to paper with pinpoint accuracy at ultra high speeds is no simple task. It requires the implementation of tons of precision machinery along with several miracles of modern science and the experience and keen eye of the press operator. Working together, these elements ensure efficient and profitable operation of the sheet bed offset lithographic press. Although offset presses require the application of several coordinated systems, the inking system is by far one of the most critical to the quality of a finished printed product. In fact, in many cases, the inking system determines the parameters by which other systems must work in order to achieve harmonious press operations. Inking systems have evolved from somewhat crude arrangements of drums and rollers at the end of the ink supply to computerized systems controlled from remote consoles and monitored through sophisticated statistical process control methods. But regardless of the sophistication level or size of the press, all inking systems have several components in common. First of all, each requires an ink fountain to hold the ink supply and to control the flow of it. They must also have a roller train or ink distribution system, which is a series of rollers designed to move the ink from the ink fountain to the plate. This configuration of hard and synthetic rubber-covered rollers is also meant to condition the ink from a thick, viscous state to a uniform film across the entire width of the press. The inking system is often referred to as the ink train pyramid. And if we could envision the plate cylinder as the bottom of the pyramid and we build the pyramid with rollers, we may have four ink form rollers, two oscillators, another ink oscillator, a distributor, and we build this ink train pyramid all the way up to the top of the pyramid, which is the ink fountain. The ink fountain, we have a series of ink fountain keys that are able to open and close and manipulate the amount of ink that we're metering out of the ink fountain to satisfy the demand of the job. The first roller in the inking system is the ductor roller, which picks up a charge of ink from the ink fountain roller and transfers it to the roller train. The last component of the inking system is the form roller section, which is usually a series of two to four rollers that are designed to transfer the ink film from the ink system to the printing plate. Ink trains come in many different varieties, sizes, and styles. The complexity of the ink train usually depends upon the number of rollers. A rule of thumb could be the more rollers in the ink train, the more power it has in distributing the ink down to the plate cylinder. Ink trains are usually computer designed and they're designed in a way to anticipate the job that we're trying to print. These ink trains handle a wide, wide variety of jobs from very light coverage to very heavy coverage. Ink is the most important single ingredient in the inking system. Without it, we wouldn't have a need for an inking system or a printing press for that matter. The printer should work closely with the ink supplier and manufacturer to determine whether a particular printing job can use a standard ink formulation and color right off the shelf or if it will be necessary to order a custom ink formulation in order to meet specific press conditions and color requirements. It's very good to communicate with your ink manufacturer. The ink manufacturer must know the type of paper you're running on, whether you're using coated or uncoated, doll or matte coated. We also want to know the color sequence that we're running in. Inks must be made for in a multicolor press for the proper color sequence that we're printing. Also, we can talk to the ink manufacturer about drying time of ink how fast we want the ink to dry. If we want to use an ink that maybe uses the drying method of infrared as versus regular oxidation. We also want to communicate with the ink manufacturer on water pickup of ink. How much water or fountain solution we want to be able to absorb in the ink film to transfer this water and ink emulsion. Once the proper formulation is selected, ink is loaded into the ink fountain. The ink fountain is a trough formed by either a flexible steel blade, a plastic liner, or in newer designs, segmented steel slides that run against a large metal fountain roller that picks up ink with each rotation. The width of the gap between the fountain blade and the fountain roller can be adjusted by fountain keys, 
which are a series of thumb screws mounted across the press. On many modern presses, the thumb screws are motor driven. Using manual or electronic fountain keys, the press operator controls the width of the gap and in turn the thickness of the ink film that is carried through the gap and onto the fountain roller. Whether you're dealing with a manual ink fountain or a remotely controlled ink fountain, such as the computer controlled ink fountains that we have on some of our more sophisticated presses, we're dealing with the demand of ink that we have to feed to a plate. If we take a look at this specific plate that I have here, there's solid areas that we're dealing with and also typed areas. In the area where there's a solid, we're going to have to supply to more ink to satisfy the demand of this image area as versus where there's type, where there's a lesser amount of ink needed. This is done by controlling or profiling the ink fountain to satisfy these needs to meter precisely the proper ink film that we need. With the flexible steel blade, one inking adjustment affects others. The segmented blades are designed to allow for independent inking adjustments. With a conventional ink fountain, if we compare it to one of the more modern ink fountains, first we have to understand why the modern fountains were created. In this small ink fountain that I have here, if you take a look at the ink keys, they're pressing against a spring steel blade. The problem we have with spring steel is if we wind these keys up to tighten and to loosen, we actually torque the blade. We can put so much stress on this spring steel blade that we may move a key on this side of the press and affect the feed on the other side. With segmented fountains, what we're doing is controlling specific zones on the press. So it's possible to push a zone all the way down and have zero ink feed, and right next to it open the zone to 100% and have maximum ink feed. This is the benefits of the modern fountains. There is no gauge to indicate that the fountain setting or gap is correct. The amount of ink flow required is determined by plate demand, ink characteristics, the paper being used, and the temperature and humidity in the press room. Regardless of the ink fountain that we're using, we never want to wind in the keys so tight that we're completely scraping the ink off the ink fountain roller. If we do that, there's a chance that we can score the ink fountain roller and ruin it. We need just a little ink to always lubricate that nip. The press operator must rely on personal knowledge of the inking system, experience with a particular press, and judgment of plate demand. If press room conditions change during a particular run, the press operator may have to adjust the ink flow in order to compensate for the change. Another way for us to control the consistency or inking level across and around the sheet is by using a densitometer. To use a densitometer though, we need to use a color bar as a signal strip that we're able to read both the primary and the secondary colors to tell us if we're in our property proper density ranges. For example, a yellow, we may set up a range of a 1.0 to 1.05. That's the range we try to control the density in during the press run. If we deviate from that density, then we have to either readjust the ink fountain or reset the sweep control on the ink fountain to get it back into the proper density range. In addition to using the judgment of the press operator, and using a densitometer, we're finding new tools are being used in this day and age, such as a spectrophotometer to measure and control the color of the ink that we're trying to reproduce. An ink agitator is often used to condition the ink supply while it is stored in the ink fountain. It usually consists of a motorized metal cone that runs along a track across the length of the ink reservoir. Ink agitators are added to the ink fountain to 